Ding dong! Ding dong! The old man screamed at me, his raspy voice creating chills that ran down my spine. In an instant, he had closed the distance, and he was nearly on me. I grew up in a small suburb. We lived in a quiet apartment on the third floor. Above us lived Mr. Hunts. He was a middle-aged man who never talked to anyone in the building. Kids in the building stayed away from him. Every morning, he would come down to the sidewalks and water the grass. Yes, just freaking water the grass on the side of the road. What's his deal, man? He's just crazy. Every time my best friend Charlie came to my house, he would ask the same question. Everyone was curious about Mr. Hunt's but no one dared to go near him. One night, Charlie came to my house for a sleepover. We watched a basketball game that night and then went to bed. Did he have a wife? What? A wife, a girlfriend, family, did he ever have any? Who are you talking about? Your freak neighbor upstairs! Dude, just shut up and let me sleep. Fine, I'll go check myself. Saying this, Charlie got up and left the apartment in his pajamas. Ah, hate that moron. I followed him. My parents were sleeping, so I had to be quiet while locking the door from the outside. Charlie was heading upstairs. I saw a glimpse of his body. Charlie! Charlie! Charlie, stop! He didn't. When I reached upstairs, I saw Charlie standing outside of Mr. Hunt's apartment. His right hand was on the doorbell. Charlie, what the frack? Stop! Cut it! Be ready to run, okay? Oh, man. Run, run, run! We stormed off the stairs like our lives depended on it. The moment we reached the door, I heard Mr. Hunts coming out of his apartment. Who's there? Open the door, dude. He might come down. I heard Charlie's voice break into a panic. I was sweating too, and then I remembered. I didn't take my key. My legs started shaking as I heard footsteps coming closer. Hurry up! What are you doing, man? The freak's gonna bury us alive! I don't... I, I don't have a key! What? I know you're down here! You can't hide from me! <laughs> oh my god! Run! We started running again. We ran straight to the ground floor. Once we made it out to the streets, it'll be all over. Yeah, now you want this to be over? This is all your fault, Charlie! I was looking behind and could hear Mr. Hunt's footsteps getting louder and closer. There! The exit! Charlie ran to the door and slammed hard on it. It's locked! Bloody hell! The footsteps weren't far. <laughs> Ready or not, here I come! Just then, the door opened from the outside and one of the tenants walked in. She started asking us what we were doing here so late. The more she kept talking to us, the more I heard Mr. Hunt's footsteps fade. When we made it back to our apartment, our parents taught us a lesson. Charlie and I were both grounded. I didn't go to school the next day. Around the afternoon, I was lying on my bed when I saw Charlie entering my room from the window. Dude, how did you cut it? I found dirt on your neighbor. What? I can't believe you're still going on with this! We both got grounded because you went on your ding-dong ditch adventure! Fine, I'll leave! But do you know he killed his wife and no one ever found the body? Shut up! That's not true! Look, it was in the newspaper! I looked for it in the archives. Charlie showed me a picture of a newspaper clipping. It was the mugshot of Mr. Huntsman with the title, Missing Person Investigation Turns Into a Mystery. They found pieces of evidence of his wife being home before the day she disappeared. Maybe he still has her in his apartment. I mean, he must have hidden her there. Somewhere so odd and simple where no one will look. Okay, I don't like the sound of your voice right now. Where are you going with this anyway? We need to get inside his apartment. What? No way! No freaking way, Charlie! Our quarrels went on for some time. And then, Charlie and I sat down to make a plan. Mr. Hunts left the apartment for two hours every Saturday night. He would go out and buy his groceries. We waited for the right time. Once we saw him on the streets from my window, 
we set out. My parents were out that night, and the babysitter was busy talking to her boyfriend over the phone so she didn't notice. Where did you learn to do that? YouTube. Now follow me. We made our way into his apartment. Charlie started sniffing the air. He probably expected the apartment to reek of rotten meat, but there wasn't anything as such. The big living room leads to a bedroom on the right and the kitchen on the left. Where do you think he'll hide it? Maybe in his freezer. We checked the freezer and found dead butterflies pinned to cardboard stacked inside. There were jars of maggots stored too. Okay, that's it. Time to go back, Charlie. Enough is enough. F fine, let's go back. We locked the door and left his apartment before our lives got in danger. I was standing on the sidewalks with Charlie. He had a defeated face but decided to stop this madness forever. Hey, isn't the grass a little thick here? I looked down following his eyes and realized he was right. We looked at each other with a horrified face. Why does he only water this side of the grass? The neighborhood I grew up in was a small, tight-knit community. As kids, we played everything from Foursquare to Manhunt on the street, day and night. Most of the residents were families whose kids were all friends with each other, with only a handful of outliers. The major exception was the neighborhood maniac, a bitter old man named Mr. Thompson. He lived alone in a dingy house right in the middle of the whole block. Nobody knew if he had children or if he had ever been married. Just that he was a total recluse who screamed at any kids who came near. For that reason, we sometimes referred to him as Old Man Nebercracker, the crazy hermit from Monster House. The resemblance between them was uncanny. Mr. Thompson was a bald and ancient skeleton of a man with a hunchback and the meanest, scariest face anybody had ever seen. Usually... Everybody avoided him the way he avoided us, but in the dog days of summer, when every other game we were playing got boring, we became a little too desperate for entertainment. It started with the big orange tree in his front yard. The whole thing was chock full of perfectly ripe oranges. One day, we all started daring each other to run up and snag one. Mr. Thompson would run outside with the baseball bat and start swinging, but it was worth it, I swear. I never tasted an orange as good as the ones I stole from Mr. Thompson's tree. Within a week, the whole thing was bare. When the fruit was gone, we wanted more thrills. It wasn't long before we got the idea to ding-dong ditch him. First, I watched the older kids from across the street, and I never laughed so hard in my life. Mr. Thompson looked like he was about to burst one of those nasty bulging veins on the top of his head. Then. As we went back inside, another kid ran up and rang the doorbell again. Sprinting away just moments before, Mr. Thompson opened the door and hurled a tire iron at him. After that close call, they gave it a rest for a few hours and had someone else do it. At that point, Mr. Thompson was threatening to call the cops, so everyone stopped for the evening. The next day, though, word got around that this was the new fun thing to do and it started getting out of hand really quickly. By late afternoon, I finally convinced my closest friends to do it. I almost had to drag my friends up to the door because of how nervous they were. Looking back, I should have listened to them. Hey man, are you sure this is a good idea? Yes, I'm sure. It's freaking Nebercracker, dude. Don't you want to get back at him? Yeah, but it's just over a couple footballs, you know? Is it even worth it? Just wait till you see the look on his face. I really don't know about this. Can't we try tomorrow? I just feel like it's been done too many times today. Oh my god, will you please stop being such a chicken? Nothing bad is going to happen to you, alright? So just chill out. <sighs> Fine, let's get this over with. Now that's the attitude I'm looking for. Come on, let's go. I'll always remember the way my heart pounded as I crept up to the door. It was such a rush. My friends were an arm's length behind me just there to get a taste for it. I could feel my pulse in the tip of my finger as I put it on the doorbell. Then I pressed it. It rang from inside. And right in that instant, the door opened. I turned around to run away from Mr. Thompson. 
but he grabbed me by my shirt and yanked me back, then held on to the base of my neck with a vice grip. All of a sudden, this wasn't funny anymore. Mr. Thompson was at a stage of rage and fury that nobody had ever seen before, and I was about to get the brunt end of it. I was too petrified to look back, but I could feel his stale breath on my ear. Look at your friends running away. Some good ones you got there, huh? I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson. I really am. I won't do it again, I swear. I know you won't. And when I'm done with you, nobody will ever pull a stunt like that again. What? What are you gonna do? Shut up! Mr. Thompson dragged me by my ear into his house. It was dark and reeked like nothing I'd ever smelled before. There was even a chair in front of the door where he had been waiting for us. As he dragged me along, it became clear that he wasn't just a hermit, but also a hoarder. There was just junk everywhere, and everything was filthy. Finally, he stopped in the kitchen and pulled me up by the throat so he could scream in my face. I'm sick and tired of you kids and your stupid games! Go ahead and tell your little friends about this and see if any of them want to still play! Well, I said shut up! Look here! Mr. Thompson forced my head down so I was looking into the kitchen sink. What I saw made me gag. It was full of this disgusting, murky water with bits of old food scraps and spit from his chewing tobacco, and it smelled like it hadn't been drained in weeks. Don't look too good! Do it! How about you get a closer look? That's when he pushed my head into the water. He held me there as I kicked and punched to try and break free. But this old man that looked so fragile must have still had his strength from his years in the military. Because I was powerless. In the struggle. I inhaled and swallowed so much water. After a few seconds which seemed like eternity, he lifted my head up. I immediately threw up into the sink, just for him to plunge my head back under, straight into it. It was awful. He kept me there until I felt like I was moments from drowning. Then he finally let me go and pushed me away. Somebody was knocking at the door. That's your savior, you little rat. Now, scram! I ran for the door, coughing and gagging and crying. When I got outside, my dad was standing right there. My friends had run off and called him for help, and I could see the look in his eyes that said he was halfway between calling the cops and beating Mr. Thompson to a pulp with his bare hands. My mom was close behind. She consoled me and took me home to wash everything off. I remember looking back as my dad entered Mr. Thompson's house for a talk. To this day, I never found out from either of them what happened, but there was a stark difference in Mr. Thompson ever since. It was like he'd been castrated. Of course, this made it easy for the whole neighborhood to reap some vengeance on my behalf. Grabbing the camera, I turned to my team who was waiting for me in the car. Let's do this, guys! Hopping into the seat, I waited impatiently for Dave to rev up the engine and we were on our way. The video idea was perfect and was sure to blow up our YouTube channel. Who could resist a viral ding-dong ditch video? Okay, guys, we need to find the perfect house for this. The matter the owner gets, the better, okay? We drove around for several hours, hopping out and playing pranks on several houses. Some of the owners had some good reactions, and I was convinced that this video was going to be sick. Eventually, however, the sun began to set in the sky and the evening chill set in. One last house for the night, guys. How about that one? I don't know, man. It looks abandoned. Exactly! Less work for us and we can say it was haunted or something. After handing the camera off to Dave, I hopped out of the car and snuck my way up the path, my heart pounding in my chest. I took a deep breath and steadied myself, then reached up to knock on the door. I threw myself around the corner of the house just in case anybody came to the door, but I already knew that there wasn't going to be any answer. The house was abandoned after all, which was why I didn't even bother to run away from the window I had flattened myself against. Suddenly, however, the faces of my friends in the car grew pale, and Dave pointed at the window behind me. I raised an eyebrow at him, then turned around. I threw myself backward, my heart pounding in my chest, as I saw the horrific figure standing in the dimly lit window. He didn't move or say anything. 
He just stood there watching us. His eyes were red and almost looked reptilian in nature. His old face was drawn taut as if he hadn't eaten in ages. His nose was gigantic and covered in warts. And his toothless grin was sinister. I felt a chill run down my spine. What a weirdo. Backing up, I ran back to the car, watching my friends laugh from the window. Whoa, what a creep. And here I thought we were just going to Ding Dong Ditch. We were shaking off the weird feeling when Dave suddenly yelled, He's following us! We all turned around and saw the figure getting into a car, the engine roaring to life. Keep the camera recording, Dave. We don't want to miss this. Hey, get out! Out of the car! We need to record this! It'll be a viral hit! We piled out of the car and waited for the creepy old man to come to confront us. He finally reached us and stopped right in front of us, his eyes fixed on me. He got out of the car, breathing heavily, his hands clenched into fists at his sides. I stepped forward, trying to be brave. What do you want? It was just a prank, man. He didn't say anything, though, and just stared at us. After a minute or two, I motioned my friends back into the car and we left. I thought he was going to do something cool for the content. That was boring. We drove down the street, and I guess I thought that the car trailing behind us was just some random vehicle. Eventually, Dave dropped me off at my house, and the rest of my friends drove off. As I began to walk toward my door, I noticed the same vehicle which had been behind us parked across the street. The man was out there, watching me. I froze in place my heart pounding in my chest. He had followed us all the way and now he was here. I took a deep breath and tried to calm myself down as I slowly backed away from the house. In an instant, however, the man had leaped out of his car. His old body moved frighteningly quickly and he ran toward me, a devilish scream of anger coming from his throat. I stumbled back, my feet unable to keep up with my racing mind. Ding dong! Ding dong! The old man screamed at me, his raspy voice creating chills that ran down my spine. In an instant, he had closed the distance, and he was nearly on me. I leaped to my feet, my heart pounding in my chest as I stumbled along the street, running as fast as I could. I could hear him behind me, his footsteps never getting closer but never farther either. I could hear him screaming behind me, some incoherent gibberish about pranks, ding dong ditch and about our crew. I heard him screaming and yelling and knew that if I stopped running for an instant he'd be on me. I didn't want to know what would happen to me. Get away from me! Eventually, as I ran into a busier part of town, he disappeared. I don't know where he went, but in one instant he just seemed to have vanished. I didn't stop running though and I ran all the way to a police station where I reported the old man. The police did have a few questions about why we were ding-dong ditching his house, but once I explained everything, they quickly launched an investigation into the man's whereabouts. According to the police, they had searched his home to find some teens being held hostage there. The old man had allegedly kidnapped these teens who had previously prank called his house. We were relieved to find out that our lives were not in danger anymore, but at the same time felt shaken up by our scary experience. I don't care how many views this video gets us, we're never going to ding dong ditch a stranger ever again. This experience was definitely a wake up call. Ding dong! Ding